it doesn't get much yummier than this. We're getting out the fun sprays today. Welcome to the fun sprays workshop. Hey, it's Kara. Welcome to my ticket at the lake. Check out the, just the awesomeness that's happening here. It looks like watercolor. Looks like high-end distress inks. It looks it looks difficult. It looks complicated. It is none of those things. It's not watercolor. It's not it's it's not what you think. And I I'm excited to show you how I make my beautiful papers. I'll show you just a few. These are envelopes, but it's the same principle. These are my fun sprays envelopes. Some of the fun sprays work like watercolor. This is salt and spattering going on here. Sometimes the salt will make it sparkle, which is awesome. Front and back. It doesn't always have to be super bright. It can be kind of under the sea-ish. It can be any color combination you pick. You get to pick. And look at all the fun stuff that's going on. Now I have done neurographic art over this and doodling over this. Today I'm just making papers because I just want to make these scrumptious, scrumptious papers. I made some for Sue Victor, who was a recent winner of one of my giveaways. I'm going to put that video up here so you can see what those look like. I did those especially for her for her fall book that she's working on. And because it was fall when she won the giveaway and the whole thing was fall themed, but I wanted to do more of that. I had such fun making those papers for her that I've been itching to get back here and do some more. I'm gonna come back to this one before we go too far. This one is a tiny bit of a cheat, but not really in that. I don't know if you can see there's some patterns here, some squares. This is the prompts list from a recent Halloween challenge that I printed off with every intention of using, but then didn't. Life just got away from me, so I did not do the challenge. But I kept this, and it was all Halloween colors, and every bit of this paper was covered in ink from my printer. Now, I don't have a laser printer, so nothing is set in stone when it gets wet this is what happens so i took this colored printed on one side piece of paper and i put it in my kitchen sink upside down and i just wet it and i just let it set overnight to see what it was going to do and this is pretty much what it did it just kind of blended the black stuck pretty well i mean everything that's black is still very black and not faded at all but all the other colors faded like crazy and it didn't do too much on the back there was a little bit of color on the back but this stuff on this side are my fun sprays fun sprays with salt fun sprays with water spatter and today's workshop because it's going to be kind of a long one and you can't do this all in one sitting because things have to dry and you have to do the salt at certain points and the spattering with water at certain points. So there's a little bit of a waiting game. And to see what they're going to really do, they have to be dry. And I'm not going to hit them with a hair dryer. It has to dry naturally. And sometimes it requires a couple of layers. I don't think this one has many layers. Maybe a couple, but it wasn't dry completely. I just hit it again and again as it was drying. And I'll explain all of that during... The workshop. I'll tell you what we're going to use here. Normally I do this in my kitchen sink, but I can't really record there. So I put plastic garbage bag down on my work surface because the fun sprays are, they do stain a little bit. So I put that down and then so you'd have something pretty to look at, just some craft paper over the black plastic bag. It's just packaging from an Amazon order that I smoothed out. I'm using my fun sprays. I have a whole fun sprays playlist that I will link below or lately YouTube has not been letting me link stuff in my descriptions so I'm having to put them as pinned comments so please make sure to always take a look at the comments if you're looking for a link to a video that I mentioned or to something that I mentioned it might not be in the description because YouTube wouldn't let me save it so I've been putting them in the comments section and 
trying to remember to pin them at the top. But there's a But there's a playlist of fun sprays and that includes my video on how to make them. Super simple. It's food coloring, spray bottles from the thrift store or from Amazon, and water, and a couple drops of isopropyl alcohol so that they don't get moldy on you. And that's it for, well, I shouldn't say that. That's not it, Bob. There's more. I also have my, this is the salt that I use in my watercolor. It's a salt mixture. It's mostly McDonald's the little packets you get from McDonald's takeout. It's mostly that, but it's also flake salt, kosher salt, canning salt, pickling salt, iodized salt, table salt, pink salt, sea salt, iodized sea salt. And I think that's all the salts that are in here. Whatever salt I had, I put in here and I mix it up because every salt is different. It's a different cut and it's a different chemical. And each of those things reacts differently with the chemicals that are in the food coloring. It's just all a chemical and timing reaction. So everything is different. Each little bit of different kind of salt leaves a different kind of mark. The other thing that I'm using today is this that was a gift to me from Leanne and her mom. They went thrift shopping and found a whole bunch of craft supplies. I'll link that video down below too if you want to see all the goodies they brought me because they brought me a truckload, I will tell you. These are acrylic mixing colors and I wanted to get these out because with my food coloring, I can get a really awesome hot pink really awesome it's almost like opera watercolor holbein's opera it's super bright pink i love that and i can get an okay purple but the purple always fades back to pink my blue is very yellow that's the food coloring the the blue and regular food coloring is very very yellow you can even see here in the pack and this is all that i've used I used whatever I had. I used some drops. These are gels. They're different brands. Whatever you have will work. I couldn't get a decent red and I wasn't any too happy with the blue either because it's a yellowy blue and I prefer a reddish purpley blue. So in my blue, I have two blues and honestly, I don't remember what I tried. Oh, maybe some of them are watercolor and food coloring. I honestly don't remember what now I've tried. I Most of this is food coloring. I did try in some of the colors that I didn't like. I tried watercolor. I'm not even sure what this one looks like. We're, these are my samples, my just practicing. See, it's a very yellowish blue. It's not very bluish at all. So I'm gonna go back into this acrylic ink and I'm going to take this this is a very neutral blue almost on the cool side of blue I'm going to take that and mix it into these blues to see if I can get a better blue result for today's workshop so there's not a lot of water in here I'm going to go put a little bit more water in here both of them because we're going to be spraying up a storm of course the more water you have the more watered down the color so you'll have to add more food coloring or if you happen to have these acrylic mixing colors or liquid acrylic acrylic inks might work i have tried a, to water down acrylic paints craft paints and it's just it just doesn't work it um clogs up the sprayers it does not react with salt acrylic paint really doesn't react with salt as well as the watercolory. Now this liquid acrylic may. Tonight's the first night I've ever been. used it, so we'll see how all of this goes. It's all gonna be an experiment from here on out. I added it to both of them because neither one is a decent blue, so hopefully now they're both better blues. I don't know. Let's see, did I, was it this one that I sprayed? Of course, you gotta remember that in the tube of the sprayer is still the original color so so we can we can manipulate these we'll get into doing i want to have good colors before i start so i've got it nice and wet and i'm just gonna manipulate it around a little bit let those colors mix and move and i did get a little bit on there that's all right i don't care it's it's all right it's gonna be fine I kind of don't like the harsh line, so I'm just gonna take that off a little bit. I do have 
a denim apron on with a wipe my hands off towel attached to it so that I that I don't get totally messy. I cannot work with gloves on. I oh, I just hate it. So, and I don't mind getting my hands dirty, but I don't want to put green on a purple and blue page later. So, I I am I am wiping my fingers off as we go a lot because I don't want the transfer in the other color schemes because not only will it transfer but it, you could muddy things up pretty bad if you're not careful so what i have done here while it was wet i sprinkled some salt i take it out of this bottle i put it in my hand and i sprinkle it that gives me more control over where i'm putting things and just like with watercolor salt here it's all about the timing if it's if the paper is way too wet it will just melt the salt and nothing will happen. If the paper is too dry, the salt will just sit on top and nothing will happen. If you're looking for this kind of magic, you have to practice the timing. Not too wet, not too dry. And once you get the timing, oh, magic happens. It's just incredible what salt will do. And I have found in watercolor and in my fun spray, the, the blues, the bluish green, the teals, and the purple, those work the best. That doesn't mean they don't work at all with the others. It just means it works best with the blues, the greens, the teals, and the purples. One of the things that you have to have when you do this, if you're wanting to do, this is another sample that I was working on earlier, you have to have a place to lay them to dry for a little bit just for a little bit because you're going to bring them back like this one i want to dry for a little bit there's still some enough liquid on there to move that around if you want to another thing that i really like to do as it's drying this one might be a better you can see how you can't hear it. It's very damp still. When it's at this point, I like to take just plain water. And I like a spray bottle that leaves not just a fine mist, but different size droplets. And with this kind of trigger, it all depends on how hard you pull it. If And I just want, I just want a couple dribbles, different size droplets. To come out and what that does if the paint is not too dry not paint fun sprays if if it's not too dry it'll leave blossoms and bleeds kind of like watercolor it will reactivate and it will leave water spots here and there and that just adds to I hate to keep bringing this one back, but it's the only one that's dry right now that's handy. It just adds to that dreamy, ethereal quality. It just It's just one more way to affect the movement of what's happening here. So now I've got three going. I have this red one. This was a practice one. And I'm just laying them f sort of flat nearby in case I want to bring it back and do, do some more. Now this hot pink here that you see is the magenta right straight out of that acrylic ink bottle i didn't water it down i just put a little on just to see what color it was and whoo she's hot magenta this orangish kind of red was my original red and then i put some of that acrylic ink red and black because even with the red it was still really pinkish and so now I've got sort of this orangey red. Let's take another sheet. And I got a whole stack of papers. I'm just using Walmart copy paper. I got I got a truckload of it last month or the month before. I have so much paper. So I've got a stack of paper here that I can play with. And I always make sure to give them a good shake. Sorry about the camera shake. Give them a good shake because sometimes this stuff settles in the bottom. And just spray it around. Now, this is still not a great red. It's pretty much what I had before. It's sort of a, oh, I don't know, 
a rusty red, a barn red. It's kind of an old fashioned Christmas red. So let's take out a green and see if we can get something that might resemble some Christmas paper. Now red and green are complementary colors. Where they mix, they're gonna neutralize each other out into a neutral color. But having them next to each other, they'll pop. So this one I'm not gonna manipulate and maneuver very much because I don't want the red and the green mixing. Like here you can see that it's mixing and it's gonna be kind of a dullish green. It's not a very happening green anyway. I'm trying to keep my crappy colors separate from my nice colors. <laughs> So sometimes you can't help, they're gonna mix because there's a lot of water and wherever the water is, the color is gonna go. See how it's a brown now? That just for me automatically puts it into a vintage Christmas. It's, it's not a vibrant Christmas thing at all. And look how light the uh, green is fading back. One thing that I'm sort of hesitant about and I can kind of see it happening here already is I wasn't happy with my yellow, so I put some of that acrylic ink in my yellow. Now, watercolor, and so far the food coloring has been very luminous, very bright when it dries. And I can see that this acrylic, the acrylic in that yellow is drying pretty dull. If we look at this, it's quite a bit brighter. It has quite a bit more, even though not just because it's a bright color scheme, but that yellow compared to the yellow here is bright versus dull, luminous versus, and that's because acrylics are opaque by nature. Apparently even the acrylic inks are opaque by nature. And it might work out, it might, it, it's gonna be fine. We're just gonna say it's gonna be fine. It's gonna work out. It might be a completely different look and that's okay. So while I have these puddles here, I'm gonna put some salt in not the deepest part of the puddles, but where, where it's kind of dry. Because if I put it in that puddle right there, it's just gonna melt the salt and it's a waste of salt. But here, where it's down here in this corner, where it's not a puddle, but it's wet, I, I can put some salt because it will do what I'm hoping it'll do. Now, quite often to get my papers where I want them to be, I do several layers if something's not drying the way I want it or it has a light spot or something like that, I just hit it again. I just hit it again. If it's not as bright as I'd like it, I just hit it again. And even though it comes through on the back, it's gonna look like the back of a page. So when this is more dry, I'm gonna, we're gonna do the back sides of this so that both sides look yummy. Now, I don't like this brown in the middle of this red, so I'm gonna just daub it up. And you gotta make sure, you might wanna label, cause this is hot pink and this is red. And if you're not careful, you get hot pink in your Christmas and you don't want, you don't want peanut butter in your chocolate sometimes, so. Pay attention to what you're doing. I'm just hitting the red again. And sometimes they're just, they're just not vibrant colors. And you're not, no matter how many times you hit it, you're not gonna get a nice vibrant color, but it doesn't hurt to try. This bottle is just a spice bottle. After, I think it had uh, everything bagel spice in it from Walmart. I like that it has a, sp a, sp 
sprinkle top on it so I can sprinkle it in here. And a flip top just saves me some time. My old bottle, I had to twist it off every time. You know, time is money, baby. So I, I don't like to take the time to do that. I could move them over and just keep rotating them for lack of space. While this is drying, I'm going to, again, hit it with just random drops. It's like sputtering and spattering the water rather than a fine mist. I want water droplets on there. Right here, you see the random water droplets? They're all different sizes and shapes. That's what I'm after rather than... A fine mist. Okay, let's see how this one over here is looking. That one, put this one here. You can see that the salt is doing its job here, making some interesting patterns. I like the colors here. This is my new purple that I just made up. There's some damp. There's a wet spot there. I'm going to hit that with some salt. And this is just trial and error. It's just, how does it feel? How does it look? I like a lot of what's going on here. I'm not happy about this super hot pink here in the corner. So I'm going to mix it up. And I use this. Leanne always gets me this wonderful hand sanitizer from Bath & Body Works. And I've been saving the bottles because after so many squirts, they just break the sprayer just doesn't work and so I these are the perfect size these are three ounce these are four ounce I accidentally bought two ounce from Amazon I hate the two ounces three or four ounces is better but I'm telling you wow does this smell good <laughs> and it's got this beautiful purple in it now it's more of a bluish purple Oh yeah, I like that way better. Way better. And you can tell sometimes when you put the salt down, not all the time, depends on the color, but you can tell when it start when it hits the wet and it starts to absorb or react with the color, it turns real dark. It, you can see that something's happening. And that's always good. Over here on this red and green one, I've got some more pooling that I would rather not be there. I'm just touching it with a Kleenex. You could, you could, if you wanted to, just like watercolor, make patterns with it while it's wet. You could do that too, but I, I don't want to do that here. But you could try it. Why don't I want to do it? I don't know. I just, it's not the look I'm going for right now. I'm looking for this, this dreamy, soft, floaty kind of look rather than patterns all right i'm gonna move some things here and you got to be careful with it because you this paper's not super high-end quality and it's really wet so you know take some care now this is just becoming a random look at the neat lines i i didn't plan that and I'm you know I just said I wanted it dreamy and soft and I've got those harsh lines I didn't plan that but it's not it's not bad this hot pink apparently is never going to go away it's just always going to be there add purple you know purple makes everything better add purple So if I don't like eating McDonald's, I eat McDonald's maybe five or six times a year. And every time I do go, I ask, can I have some extra salt and ketchup? And man, if you get somebody that's either in a good mood or a bad mood, man, they'll fill that bag with those little packets of salt. I have family members who go there all the time and I say, get, get some extra salt, would you? Get some extra salt. And so they bring me back. They collect them over a while and they'll give me a Ziploc bag full of mcdonald's salt packets and then i just spend a half hour and i pour them in here because i use a lot of it i use i use it 
thankfully I'm not ingesting it. I'm just creating art with it. Now, I'm going to put a couple pages down because I'm going to switch colors. And I, I don't want to uh, contaminate. Another thing that I'm using here is my coffee spray as a brown. Instead of mixing a brown, I just use, this is instant coffee in super hot water, pretty highly concentrated. And I use that to vintage things up. I always have it at the ready. One of my favorite mixtures for fall, especially, is the brown. And so today, the coffee is one of my fun sprays. And once in a while, because coffee it gets it gets up in here and it messes with this contraption and it won't spray so you gotta rinse the whole thing out put the sprayer in a little jar with hot water and just clear that out sometimes they take it apart and clear it out which i'm probably gonna have to do because it's jammed up here and i need i need more coffee so i'm gonna get this one started so it can set but i like the brown with the teal just like that is awesome. But then a little tiny bit of orange. Right, let me go wash my thing out because I need more coffee right now. So it takes less than two minutes. I take this, this part off, take this out of here, rinse this whole thing really good. I had to bang it around a little bit to get it unstuck. Then I stuck this part, the sprayer part only, in a glass with clear hot water and sprayed it clear and now it works like a charm works like a charm of course it's full of water and i want it full of coffee <laughs> i love how this orange is seeping into that teal coming over to this red and purple one it's mostly dry so I'm going to hit it with a couple of random spittles of, of water. Same with these others over here that are all just sitting here by themselves kind of drying. I'm just lightly spattering just a few random drops of water over there on the other ones too. Same process. This works really well on fabric. And this works really well on craft colored paper. You get a very muted, calm, beautiful effect when you do this on craft colored paper. The colors obviously aren't going to be as vibrant, but oh, do they turn out nice. I've, I've done this on, well, you'll see in the other videos, fabric strips for faux sari silk closures for for projects, you know, fake seam binding. There's just all kinds of uses for, for this method. I do this on envelopes, business size envelopes, mailing size, the big pack 9x13 mailing size envelopes. I guess they're all mailing envelopes, aren't they? Yeah, you know what I mean. Tags, index cards, it's the same method. Layering salt spattering with water letting it dry hitting it again doing the back it's it's all the same where the orange and the teal have met is brown they neutralize each other out brown is a neutral color could be the coffee sure sure but it's mostly the teal and the orange meeting up that's what happens when complementary colors meet Speaking of color, I have a workshop series over on Patreon called Get to Know Your Palette, and it talks quite a bit about how to A, know which colors are complementary pairs, B, if you can do simple math, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, you can avoid mud in your color mixing, whether you're doing acrylic or watercolor or craft paint or fun sprays. Super easy, easy color mixing method it's called get to know your palette over on my patreon i'm adding to it all the time so you can see there's lots of wet wet places but there's a part here that's fairly dry and it's pretty light still so i'm gonna hit it 
with some more of the teal because I like it a little more vibrant. And this is where my co coffee was at first, so I'm going to get that again. I'm going to go add some more coffee to my coffee because the last time I filled this up, I used stuff that was left in my pot, and that's just not strong enough. I prefer craft coffee pretty dark. You can also take instant coffee. This is just cheap stuff from the dollar. Oh no, this is cheap stuff from Walmart. Break it down on my fingers and sprinkle that in for some dark spots. Crush it up and sprinkle it. And that leaves an interesting effect as well. I'm going to stick with that palette for a little bit since we have the... Fall colors. May as well add a little bit of that hinky red. It's certainly okay to go over colors you've already gone over. It's not going to hurt anything. There's a lot of water going on here. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm just going to let it do its thing. It's still really, really wet here. So I'm just going to let it continue to dry. I'm not going to add anything to it. When it's not puddled, I'm going to add some salt to it. Even though this is pretty wet, there are parts that are not as wet. Over here, the corner didn't get hit at all, so I'm just going to move some of that color onto that corner. Nothing worse than having bright white anything on a vintage something or other. See how these others are doing. Salt did some really cool stuff with that red. A lot of pattern and stuff going on there. Here's what the back looks like. I laid it on the purple earlier and that's alright. I'm going to spray the back because it's it looks like the back and I don't want it to look like the back. I want it to be as pretty because the idea here is to fold these in half and put them in your journal pages as, as standalone journal pages that are beautiful front and back. Here's where the blue one's at. Now again, this piece right here, when I opened that acrylic ink yellow, I put the top, it had a protective seal on it and I laid that there just for some color but it's not moving it's not going anywhere that's what acrylic does once it dries it's done moving so I should have thought of that before I put that down there or at least watered it out or something but I didn't and it's all right you know it's just part of the pattern a lot of beautiful things going on here looks like it got a little bit of it might be a little bit of the purple from the other spray, but it but it's in the center, so it might be that blue drying back into a little bit of a purple, which would be awesome. I love how the all the colors, there's the yellows and the greens and the lime greens and a little bit of purple and violet mixed in there. A lot of beautiful color going on there. Here's the purple one, still pretty wet, as you can see. But a lot, a lot of cool things happening. I love that dark, almost black, whatever that is going on there. That's really cool. I do have a blackish here. I think I might add some of that, or maybe I did add some of that to, or is that the purple? See, I have two. Oh, that's purple. This is the black-ish. I don't know if I added any of the acrylic ink to this or not. We should probably just add some more for good measure, right? Acrylic mixing inks, acrylic mixing colors. Shake it up good because it does settle. Give a good hearty squirt in there. 
So the blue is leaking all over the place in there. So I'm not going to put them back in the box. I'm going to keep them upright. Nice little mess. Oh well. Learn as you go. Ah, the junk journaler's conundrum. This is so nice. It's got the rounded corners. What a wonderful little journal cover this is going to make. You see that? It's such a nice little size. Just a one little signature journal. Oh, I can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. Inspiration is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. All right. What's happening here? My red is fading away. So I'm going to add some more. I think I'm going to add some coffee to this one. Crystals. I should keep a little jar of these, a little jar of this handy for just such an occasion. Again, I'm grabbing just a tiny little bit in my fingertips and scrunching them so that they're really granulated and sprinkling it just like the salt in the wet spots. You see what's happening here where I sprinkled the coffee? It's pretty spectacular. I'm quite liking it. So you see what I mean that it takes some patience. Usually when I do this, as I said, I'm doing it in my kitchen sink and I'll spray a few layers and then I'll go work on the computer. I'll spray a few later, layers and then go switch out the laundry and I just do it in between a thousand other things. I just have it out and I just spray and go and spray and go and spray and go. And so it, it does take some time, but I think the results are so worth it. They're just so unique and so beautiful. When they're dry and we do the back, and when that is dry, I'm going to add some spatters of metallic watercolors just for another layer of yumminess. So that's where we're headed. But it, it takes a while to get there. It's going to take a while to get there, especially given how wet some of these are. Now these under, these liner pages are going to be awesome. Look at all the colors going on here. Can you see that? Oh, you can see that right up here. Oh, just yummy. I was going to put teal on that one and I forgot. So we'll do the next one with some teal in it. Nice little head start. So let's not forget the teal this time. We'll start with that. Try and put the coffee where the coffee already is from mopping it up. Yeah, almost every color on the rainbow is here, except for the blue and the purple, and we could add purple. We could add blue, too. Well, no, this is kind of a warm. We'll do a warm purple. Just a teeny bit. If I get too much salt in my fingers, I just sprinkle it in this little cup. Nothing ever wasted. Nothing ever wasted. If I over, if I spill out too much, I don't just throw it out. I throw it in that little cup and use it the next round. Where did I get the teal and the orange? These are Wilton gel food colorings. It says gel. Oh, they're liquid. <laughs> oh, I love that. When marketing people don't get it right. 
they're not gel they're liquid but it's the bright food colorants purple magenta teal and orange and that's where but this purple even the i have a paste i think it's a wilton paste and it comes out of the little t tub just the most deep violet wonderful purple color and it always dries back pink it always dries back pink it always dries back pink you can see it's happening still looks pretty purple on camera but right here this is a really pinkish purple and it should be violet now in camera this looks like Walt Disney puked but it's beautiful it is doing beautiful 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 things and you've seen the finished product they end up gorgeous but right now she's looking a little scary it's gonna be wonderful I'm going to do one more in this color, and then, and then we're going to let them dry, do the backs, let them dry, and do the finishing touches. You can also wet these before you do anything. It just, it just lightens up the colors. It just dilutes whatever you put down on there. But you can certainly do that as it's just another way to start. Look what's happening here. Oh, it's just so yummy as those colors all meld together and and play nice together. Here too, real pretty. That's where that one's at right now. And the color schemes, like this one right now, I want to add blue to it for some reason. I'll do that on another one, but it just, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. Look how green the teal has turned once it hit that yellow. It's no longer teal, it's vibrant green or pretty bright green. Maybe that's what I'll do to make a vibrant green, teal and yellow. Maybe I'll try that. See, it just it never ends. It just keep a going and keep a going and keep a going. <laughs> so these others that I have sitting on the side here drying, I'm just gonna randomly spatter with water while they're still pretty damp to get those water marks. I have some drying on the floor I can hit them to. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it makes all the difference. It's all an experiment. So a teal, I want it to be teal, not green. So we're gonna teal it up. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more on my own. Same process, squirt, spatter, salt, let them dry, manipulate them, and then I'll let them dry and we'll come back and do and then we'll finish them off. I was going to do brights, but it's it is the season for fall, so the fall colors, I'm just going to keep doing that. But I'm going to try this teal and brown with some blue. Oh, I would just like some, a real blue. That's better. And don't be discouraged. You might not see the magic until they're 100% dry. You might not see what you're looking for until they're dry, dry. And then you'll be, you'll be happy with how they turned out. Okay, it is the next day. I, I let them dry overnight. 
I was in here a hundred times watching them, checking on them, seeing what they look like, seeing what the backs look like, because I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm really happy with how things have turned out. I haven't done anything to them except let them dry. You'll notice that when things dry, the coffee and the salt. Oh, more crap lanch. And I say crap, C-R-A-P, because it's not crafts that's falling, it's just crap that's falling all over the place. I have to show you this. I have these magazine images that I harvested for a project, <laughs> but I laid the colored papers on top and look how yummy those are. I'll tear those out for collage and clusters and master boards because that's just spectacular. I love the things that you can't get by planning. You know, this, this is just so cool with the writing in the background and how the colors work. I wouldn't put these colors together on purpose, but that's how they happened. It looks really cool. Uh, so be careful where you lay this stuff because, of course, it seeps through the back. Getting back to the salt, it dries on there. You kind of have to scrape it off. And I have been known, <laughs> there's a video out there of mine somewhere, that I, I, I've kept the salt because I do a lot of salt on my watercolor. So when I scrape it off like this, I just put it off put it all in a little cup and use it again. So you scrape off the three-dimensional parts. So we'll just look at them right now, how they're doing. Sometimes you don't need to do the back. Yesterday, the backs didn't look so hot. I don't know if I need to do anything to this. It's a little less vibrant. So if I wanted it brighter, I could hit the back of it. I don't have to though. Again, these are you can do anything with them, but I like to picture them just simply folded in half and add some beautiful, beautiful, you made it 100% unique, your art papers, your hand dyed papers. No two are going to be alike. We're all going to pick different color combinations and different intensities and different numbers of layers. And so they're all going to be different. And that's that is magnificent. Can you imagine a fall journal just filled with these pages? You wouldn't have to do much. Throw a, a die cut leaf and a fall sentiment and ooh, done. <laughs> It'd be one of the easiest journals you ever made, I think. So I don't know if I'll add anything to this one. Let's look at the rest of them. This one was the darkest one. This one was the last one. And all the other ones I mopped up with a Kleenex, the puddles. This is what happens when you don't mop up the puddles. You get a dark spot. It's not bad. It's not horrible. It does kind of stand out, so I might glue something over that. But this one is the darkest of all. Uh, I think I may have added more layers and did not, like I said, mop up the dark spot. So that's front and that's the back. Again, it's quite pretty. Um, but for as vibrant as this is, I think I will do something with the back of this, which means I'm just going to do the same exact process that I did to the front. I'm just going to spray. And when I do that, I try to get the same colors. Coffee where there's coffee, teal where there's teal, orange where there's orange, because it will bleed through and it will affect this side a little bit. These are just, see, look at all that salt. If I collect it, it's not only salt I could use, but it's salt that's now impregnated with different colors. I have this whole thing that I made of colored salt. I have a, a Studios Experiment video that I've been wanting to bring you for months. I want to see how this works. This, this little bit of salt was the inspiration to make colored salt. And we'll see. I've not tried them yet. I'm saving them for the video. And I've not made it yet. I've just got all the stuff stacked in one place, ready to go. That was just from one piece of paper. There's a lot of salt there. I've got, I don't know, 10 sheets of paper here with salt on it. So I'm going to collect a lot of salt. Before we go to the rest of them, these are just the background pages. These are just the pieces of paper that were underneath. And they are gorgeous. Look at that. beautiful. These I would just hit in the white spots because again I don't like bright white with vintage colors so I would I would hit these again so we'll put this in the pile to 
to hit again. This one's actually still damp. I still have a window open in here. This is another sheet. Oh, look at it. Look at that. I mean, it just doesn't get any, any better than that. The entire spectrum of the rainbow is in there. And it just practically glows. It's the little things that keep us happy and sane. You know, just marveling at blades of grass is, is you know, can do wonders for the psyche. This all is kind of sparkly there, which is awesome in that dark spot. But then I'm going to cover it up so it doesn't really matter now, does it? So those three will redo. This is the front. And again, lots of just yummy, yummy stuff happening. The salt at work. And that's the back. I think I will hit this one again too. The front's okay, but it, I just I just want a little something else. Like too much red in one spot, so I'm going to cover that with something. Try and soften out that harsh line a little bit if I can. So we'll hit that one. We'll come at that one from the back. Very nice. Love, love, love. And you can always, people like to scan their stuff in, and that only works if you have a really high-end, decent scanner. The camera in your smartphone is way, way better quality than the crappy thing that's on your old printer's scanner. So just take a close-up shot of it, crop out all the stuff, and print it. And then you can save them, you know, and use them over and over and over again. I could, I could, in fact, I just might do that. Take some pictures of these and make a digital kit out of them. So that my favorites I can use over and over and over again. Or if I want to do a color themed journal and these work great, instead of making a thousand of them, I can make ten, take a picture of them and print out a thousand if I wanted to. There's the back. It's very subtle. Look at that. So cool. And here you can see the different kinds of salt. There's big salt bursts and teeny, teeny, tiny little salt bursts. And that's why I have a mixture of salt so that I get a mixture of effects. I think I'll leave this one. There's the purple one. I was re-watching the video from earlier and remember this had that somewhere on here super super dark and it kind of went away I don't know what happened to it where did it go <laughs> here's the back of that one lots of salt action going on here not much happening here so I will hit this one for sure with the purples and the blacks yeah, I was practicing with my red to see what my red would do and then I tried to do a Christmas you know it's alright you know, a lot of people even like that sort of pinkish, pink, reddish in their Christmas stuff. I don't know if I would use this for Christmas. What I would probably end up doing is hitting it with coffee and calling it fall. Coffee and orange and calling it a fall thing instead of a Christmas thing. But look at all the stuff that's happening here. I, I will do this back and I would stick steer clear of this. Although what's here is probably not going to go away. It'll just have a layer over it, but I would I would try to steer clear of that on the back. So that one needs some love, needs some more attention. The blue and the green. Now, not even though the salt always works best with the blues and the teals and the greens. Either I didn't put enough salt on here, or my timing was wrong. But there isn't a lot of salt action, but there is beautiful color mixtures beautiful color play pockets of magic i really like this one except for the big old yellow blob that's not going anywhere unless i cover it or cut it very nice back even though it's super light and it has a lot of white i may just leave it as it is. This one was a practice sheet. Again, the magenta, the acrylic magenta just sat there and did not move ever. It's never going to. That's what this streak is. I was laying papers on here and spraying and so it's got kind of this mask effect. 
but it would be wonderful in in an eclectic journal it would be wonderful tore up for collage here's the back really really pretty stuff going on a lot of color play this is one of the, one of the called a bleed black bleed back or a blossom where it got wet and reactivated some of the color i think that's wonderful but i probably will play with this one just a little bit more not so much the back well, maybe yeah i'll play with that one a little bit i don't know what i'm gonna do with it and i think this is the the most fun one now remember this one had oh let's do purple and there was bright 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 purple here and there and it it looked overpowering but watercolor always dries back about 20 percent and the food coloring seems to do about the same so everything dried back quite a bit so that purple is not overpowering at all in fact it just adds a layer of magic to it i think lots of salt happening and this is the back look at that oh it's just it's just rainbows and wonderful it's fantastic so i'm going to put that extra salt in my leftover cup again i ask is that taking no scrap left behind too far question mark even this is fun even this is fun it's you know it's just spattered and if you tried to do this it wouldn't look nearly as cool it would look stilted and, and like you tried to make it i'm going to leave this one as it is i think it's perfect so i have four that i'm not going to add to I'm not going to add more color to. I am going to add the metallic. And you don't have to do this as a step at all. But you can. If you want. And that is add. This one I think needs a silver. Just taking my watercolor. And my Kiritake metallic watercolors. Somewhere in a video I recently said. I have absolutely no room in my life for pan watercolors. And that is true. I'm not buying pan watercolors ever again however a lot of the metallics come in pans and i i will buy metallics because they're magical so i want i want this to be very wet a lot of water in that paint so that i can just spatter it i like to turn my paper when i spatter so that i get different directions i also spatter in different directions i just dipped it in water to get a lighter version and the wetter it is the more it will move you can go around the edges you know if you wanted to edge the pages I don't really want to but that's always an option just go like you would a marker but just use your brush and go around just use your brush and go around adding a frame or a border to that paper let's try a color we can see on white well, it doesn't have to be perfect this is a mixture now of three golds that I have on my brush. And that just adds something spectacular to those pages. You can do this on any paper. Add that little bit of a border around, do both sides if you want. Oh, there's no place to put anything. And you don't have to be too heavy handed with this. This even lo looks more like under the sea-ish bubbles and mermaid, mermaid burps. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but now it's out there. You can see the underlayment here, the craft paper, the fun sprays, as I said earlier in the video, work beautifully with craft paper. So I wanted to show you what I did after I stopped recording the video. This is the underlayment paper. I just sprayed all over it and threw some salt at it. I only did one layer on this. But it, I wanted you to see what it looks like on craft paper. It's yummy. And this this packing material from Amazon is perforated, so it, it tears out to these perfect sizes. What a what a yummy journal page this would make. Could make just a, an accordion journal concertina style journal let's tear another one and see 
guess that was only half half the sheet so here's a full sheet you can't see it it is oh almost a double eight and a half by eleven size so cutting this down or folding this up oh it would make a really cool zine might do one of those i watched meg journals do her frankenzine and i love working small like that this this would make a perfect size so we'll probably make a zine out of this coming soon but it the fun sprays are wonderful on craft colored paper i didn't do anything to the back it's just sort of bled through a little bit certainly could do something to the back but you don't have to that's the beauty of these things the choice is always up you. So I have two full size sheets and then two of these off. I'm not saving my salt. Oh I am. It's all over the desk so I can put it all in my little cup. Isn't that scrumptious? So I have two, two of these funky sizes. Again they'd make wonderful book pages, journal pages, inserts. Wonderful for collage. Just a feast for the eyes. So try your hand at that as well. Just gonna add just the tiniest bit of gold to these. And I'm, I'm not gonna do both sides because I prefer just a little. In fact, these are kind of heavy handed, even though I know it's gonna dry back a little bit. But I think I'll do this time. I already have a schmutz of gold on there from somewhere, somehow. I'm just gonna put these together and transfer the extra from this teal one onto this orange one so that there's less here and a little bit here. Now it's not, it's not terribly overpowering. You know, people like a lot of bling sometimes, and you do whatever suits your fancy. That is the beauty of doing this kind of thing, because you get to pick. You are 100% in, in control. When things feel like they're out of control all the way around you, <laughs> everywhere you look, if there's chaos, that's what crafting is for. Focusing on positively creating something. It's all good. It's all good, and it's beautiful, and we created something wonderful out of nothing really plain copy paper from walmart and some food coloring and water <laughs> and it doesn't get any easier or cheaper or more fun than that i'm gonna leave you with this you know the process you don't have to see me do the backs of the pages it's the same process just wait till they're dry see what they need and then do it another time Go love up your beastlies. Give them extra treats. Keep their mind occupied. Get them a puzzle or make them a puzzle. There's a whole bunch of DIY dog puzzles to keep their brains occupied because they are thinking little brilliant beings. People have never given them enough credit. We're still not giving them enough credit. I just filled Bitsy's little puzzle toy with treats and peanut butter and I made it difficult this time, this puzzle. I'll put a link in, in the description below if I can if i can't it'll be in the just comments there's several different levels that you can make it it's the same puzzle it's just how you set it up so when i first gave it to her it was super super easy and today we were at one of the hardest levels and she cleaned it up she's got it all figured out and it keeps her occupied gives her something to do you know if they're just sitting there staring at the wall give them something to do put a treat in a kong or make a diy or have a game or do some agility training with them they are hungry to a use their brains and b spend time with you however that may be might be curling up on the couch you have a lovely crafty day my take at the lake for now.